Well, welcome again to our Side by Side. And thank you for joining me on this little journey from darkness or the dawn into the, the brightness of the light of understanding. Yesterday we were thinking about Cleophas and his friend as they came from Jerusalem to Emmaus and Jesus began to open up their eyes. He sharpened up the picture, as it were, of himself as he drew it on the basis of the Old Testament and helped them understand, as it says in this chapter 30, 24 of Luke, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. But then we ask ourselves this, how does Jesus then convince these two that he is truly alive? It's one thing convincing them that the things that were due, that happened to him were meant to happen to him and everything was absolutely as it should be. But what about convincing them that he is truly alive? Now, there's a tipping point in this story. So let me read on as from yesterday. We finished at verse 27. Verse 28 says, As they approached the village to which they were going, <clears throat> Jesus continued on as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it's nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. Now, it may just be, to many a person, just a little bit of background to the, fill in the story. But I think as you read this, you discern something a little bit more. They come near to the village. There's a seven-mile walk. It would have taken them a fair bit of time. They're talking, and when people talk, sometimes they slow down. Maybe an hour, maybe an hour and a half, maybe more. It's been a journey from Moses all the way to the cross for them. And how their minds have been opened, how their understanding has been opened. So that part has been, has been ongoing. And then it says, Jesus continued on as if he were going farther. Then verse 29 has, but. This is what I would see as a little tipping point. Now the day, the day is far spent. It's now getting towards that time of evening. And there's an invitation. They urged him strongly, stay with us. For it is nearly evening. And of course, in Palestine, you don't have that long, slow, from light to darkness. It's very sudden, and you would be all of a sudden in the darkness. And when then he comes into the home, then he takes, uh, he sits at table, and he gives thanks, and he breaks the bread, and he begins to give it to them. So here we have this setting. They have invited him to come into their home for supper. That is, I think, a crucial moment, the invitation. He responds to the invitation. Notice it says they urge him strongly. That's how it says it in the NIV. And I think it's a, a real encouragement for you and I. When we invite the Lord Jesus to come to us, to help us, to be with us, he will. And then, as they sit down at the table, we read that wonderful words there. When he took the bread, he blessed it, he broke it, and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened and they recognized him. And then he vanished from their sight. One simple act. But for those who had been touched previously by Jesus, maybe, maybe they had seen the 5,000, maybe they had been in the crowd, but I don't doubt, but they heard about the 5,000. They heard about the day that he took those five barley loaves and broke them and dis distributed them to the disciples to hand them to the crowd. If not by experience, I'm sure they had these second-hand stories. Now, does everything come together for them? The passage says here, their eyes were opened. Not just physically, but that inward sense, because that's really what's important. Previously we read in verse 16, their eyes were kept from recognizing him. Well, it might not have happened had they not urged him to stay and prevailed on him. And that's, as we say, so crucial for us, that we don't just simply drift along. Now, I don't know if you are a Christian listening to this. It may be that you're not, and you're just, you maybe just happened on this. 
But I just want to say to you that, you know, in life, most things just don't happen to you by, as it were, dropping into your lap. As you pursue things, you discover things. And it's no different when it comes to the truth about Jesus. If you pursue him, you will find him. So we must exercise every part of our being and employ all our abilities because what we're about is the most urgent thing in the world. We're thinking about that moment when your eyes close in this earth and they open in the next. And that's eternity. And your eternity is worth pursuing. What will your life be then? Seeking Jesus opens the door to that, for he does say he is the way, the truth, and the life. Notice also how simple things have their special meaning. The blessing and the breaking of the bread become very crucial. There's such a depth to discerning hearts. How many things are missed? How much is unheard? Because perhaps we're in too big a hurry. Time slowed down around the table reminds us of the God-given rhythms of Sabbath and season. The broken bread has such depth of meaning and significance to the Jew and the Christian. Originally in the Passover, the lamb and the unleavened bread and the way that Jesus explains how he is the bread of life and maybe it would be worthwhile just to take time and slowly read John 6, especially verse 32, which says, It was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. You see, these things are lost on lots of people. Even on that day, John records, in, in, in that chapter 6 of John, when he records them at Capernaum, particularly the verse 51 there, it says, and the bread that I give for the life of the world is my flesh. Even then there was a dispute among those who listened because they didn't truly hear. So here in this home in Emmaus with this couple, they see, they get it, they know who it is and why it is so. There were some extra factors to consider in this, how their eyes were opened. Well, first of all, it says, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened up the scriptures? That's what they say to each other. Did not our hearts burn within us? In other words, there was something going on. I think what this really means is that there's some inner spiritual awakening, stirring, testifying, a sort of coming alive in response to the truth. It's not just that gut feeling we speak of because there has been a whole series of very crucial things, no less the teaching by Jesus, maybe even as Jesus broke the bread, maybe his wounds were visible then, maybe they could see in his hands the marks of the nails. So now that their eyes are opened, what do they do? The brightness of the light has come. What do they do with this? Well, they got up, verse 33 says, and they returned at once to Jerusalem. Having already said that the day was well on, far spent, darkness has fallen. The interesting thing is, early on in the light their vision was so dim, but now in the darkness of the night they see everything very clearly, and that changes everything. So they return to Jerusalem in the dark. Their lives are full of light as they travel. That means this full of the light of understanding, and that changes everything. They, get, they have new they have a new speed in their step. They have hope. They're motivated. They're inspired. Indeed, they're compelled. No time to waste. All they can see are the sad, lost faces of the disciples that they left behind. We must go. So that phrase, at that CMR, or at once, indicates this echo of Jesus. You know, it's, it's where they, he talks to the disciples in John 4. He says, look, they were saying, you've got to eat. He says, no, no, I have, I have. I have bread to eat that you are, I have food to eat that you don't know anything about. There's an inner strength. And they find this inner source of strength. And then when they come, they say, they find the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It's true, the Lord has risen. Ah, so they have come, and it's like the colliding of two great truths. The eleven say, Yes, it's true, the Lord has arisen and has appeared to Simon. And then the two of them told how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. And so there's this accumulation of evidence. And it is so important for you and I to remember that 
It's not just one thing. There is an accumulative evidence. There's all the pieces coming together. And that cumulative weight of evidence is so powerful. And it's so encouraging for you and I. We're not asked to believe just on one thing. It's the cumulative weight of so many different things that when they're all brought together, a compelling case is made for who Jesus is, for why he came, for what he did, and for what it means for you and I. And I hope that this will really encourage you today and keep yourself in the light of God's great truth.